Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Thursday, March 8th, 2018. I'd like to do a quick look at the markets, and when I say quick, I hopefully can wrap this up before we close market. The closing bells in about 10 minutes, it's about 10 till 4 right now. Uh, Eastern time, of course. Uh, let's take a look at the 60-minute charts. I'll jump out real quick to a daily chart. I'm not going to get into all the weekly charts, everything I've covered before. We're still above, most importantly, we're still above the primary trend lines on the weekly charts. So we, uh, as I've continued to say, don't have anything um, remotely close to long-term sell signals on the stock market or anything like that. In other words, the primary uptrend is still intact despite the re recent correction that we had. Uh, near term, uh, like I said before, it's a mess and it's probably going to continue to be a mess. When I say a mess, I'm talking about we're just kind of grinding around sideways. You know, we had the, the quick swoon down during the correction late uh, January, early February, followed by a sharp bounce up. And uh, really for the last you know, I uh, guess going on almost a month now, we're really, we've, we've gone nowhere. We went up a little, down a little, and you can see we're right about where we were, you know, back in mid-February here. So uh, again, sort of a sideways grind we're caught up in the last few weeks, at least in the broad market. QQQ is doing a little bit better. Uh, you know, I take a look at the indicators here. We did have a divergent high, you know, that, that cued us in here. Um, that led to that correction. But right now we're sort of flattening out the PPO, uh, as well as a MACD, they're they're sort of flattening out here around the zero line. So there's not any predictive value, if you will, or anything I can take from this, um, uh, at least on the SPY. So maybe more of the same, but I'm going to show you another scenario. I'm not crazy about some of the developments I'm seeing recently, especially on the small caps. Let's take a look before we get into the small and mid caps. We'll look at QQQ 60 minute. QQQ, same story, uh, except with a sharper rebound. Um, you know, and that's one thing that that has kept me tilted towards the bullish side. And still at this point, slightly leaning towards that. You know, the scenario I've talked about with the market going on soon to make new highs. Um, we had a very sharp, you know, correction in QQQ with an even stronger recovery. And what that tells me is they were still buying tech. Uh, you know, had I seen a change in character in this market, which for, for years now has been tech, tech, tech. I mean, you give me QQQ, NASDAQ 100, uh, the big fang stocks. And that's what people gobbled right back up and took the cues back towards just right about. I mean, we're talking within basis points, you know, technically insignificant. Took us back to our previous highs there. And so far today, we've, we've you know, fallen a little shy of that. So we're not far away from new all-time highs in QQQ. Uh, if we do get that, you know, I've talked about a scenario here in the, in the large caps where we, uh, if we do punch out to new highs soon, uh, it's likely to be a divergent high. In other words, I drew extended lines here, and that would show a uh, possible divergent high there in QQQ. SPY, like I just showed you, isn't even close. Let's just take a look. We'll go down the spectrum and market capitalization. This is the mid-cap ETF. And again, we're on. I started with, and I'm still on the 60-minute charts, just trying to gauge the near-term direction of the market here. Uh, there was a breakdown that we had. So same story, obviously, most of these, all the major indices, whether small, medium, or large, they're all going to do about the same thing. That ended, that, that correction ended with a divergent low. And this is why, um, you know, I was bullish down here at the lows. Same reason I was bearish at the highs, divergent high, simple stuff. But what I've noticed uh, as well in the, as the, uh, both on the small or mid and small caps, I should say, we're on the mid caps here, is we had a divergent high so far on this rally. And you can see we're still far well off the, the highs. Uh, that divergent high did lead to a correction, as they so often do, especially on the 60-minute time frame. And just recently, we put in a second divergent high, or really an extension of the previous divergences that were in place. Uh, so there's some cause for concern. Uh, the, you know, the mid caps are gonna need to uh, giddy up here and start to rally to take out these divergences otherwise this may play out for another leg down and it could it could exceed this leg in fact i would expect it to if this starts we start to roll over here we'll probably come back and uh possibly revisit those lows maybe come close to a near close a near test of those lows maybe undercut them slightly this scenario cannot be ruled out yet. I wish I could tell you with confidence right now which way the the market's going. If it will, if all of these indices will make new highs before they take out these lows, 
I just can't, not at this point in time. And again, I'm not liking the fact we're seeing the PPO roll over here, just made a bearish cross on MDY, the mid cap ETF. Uh, same story on the small caps, small caps IWM. Uh, pardon all these lines. These are old support and resistance lines that I've had here on this chart for a while now. But uh, you can see a similar story. There was a trend line break. Uh, like everything else, this recent correction in early February ended with strong bullish divergences on the 60-minute chart. Uh, those are my my go-to buy and sell signals, these negative divergences and positive divergences or divergent highs and divergent lows on the 60-minute time frame. So I didn't have it marked up here, but there it is. And that was a catalyst for this rally. Uh, now we did have uh, at this point here, right here, we had a divergent high on the 60 minute so everything is sort of in fast forward mode usually you don't get these 60 minute divergent highs and lows in such close proximity we've had you know several just in the last month or so here month and a half or so divergent high divergent low divergent high and these were certainly tradable pullbacks each one obviously this one was you know very profitable uh go long there that was also very profitable um now, this is what's concerning me on the small caps is we have, you can see, just like the mid caps, negative divergence. It's really just an extension of these this previous divergent high. We did get a correction, but we continued to diverge on the second high. So that's an extension there. That doesn't look good. So uh, for the bullish case, we need to see IWM uh, move up soon. And by taking out or negating these divergences, that's a term I use. What I mean by that is we need to take out this previous reaction high right here, these reaction highs and all the indicators. Um, and so far we haven't done that. We're falling just shy. So that, uh, again, uh, right now, just purely based on this, uh, we haven't rolled over yet. That would indicate that we, we could be in for a, a decent correction here. Um, but I'm not seeing that divergent on large caps. And I put a higher weighting. If you guys know most of the recent videos, I've only focused on the large cap stocks. The rest of the stock market, the small caps, meaning the, the micro caps, the small caps, the mid caps, for the most part, they're going to follow what the big caps do. Uh, that's where most of the money, by far, most of the money in the stock market is in those large cap stocks. So there it is. Um, you know, something to note, you can see this line was color coded. And when I was uh, uh, looking right before the video, I, I want to take a look. I have to go back in time, but you can see there's a lot of reactions. That's a significant level, that 144.25 um, by significant level. I'm talking about a lot of reactions. This is where the last advance stopped. This was a stick save. We broke it intra. Day. Now, this is a 60 minute. Well, now we're on four hour candles. So we broke it intraday, but we closed above it. So one, two, three. We had a lot of reactions around this level and then a big gap up. I know you can't really make it out in this video. If I zoomed in there, you could. Uh, and it goes all the way back here. We had a divergent high and a big correction back in July of 2017. So what I'm showing you there are the number of reactions among this uh, along this level, about 144.25. So if things get ugly soon, we take another dip. That is a, a very important support level for the small caps for IWM. Uh, one more chart I wanted to show you. Let's go back to the SPY. Let me get this back on a 60-minute chart before I forget to do that. Okay, what I'm looking at here is a uh, just a clean chart, meaning I don't have any trend lines or annotations. This is a four-year chart, goes back four years. They're two-day candle peer, uh, candlesticks, meaning every candlestick represents two days price action. Just a limitation on this TC2000 charting platform. You can only go back. I think it's 200 periods, you know, 200 candlesticks. So. If I want to go back uh, in time, I use a lot of different charting services. This one's just the easiest, most fluid to do these videos on. So either way, what I wanted to show you is, uh, uh, you know, some similarities that I that I've noted here. When we go back, you know, as as you guys probably are aware, the correction that we just had, this correction here, was the biggest in in quite a while. Um, but we did have two similar uh, drops as far as the scope of the drop, you know, you can simply just take a trend line here. Here's one way to measure in percentage terms. If you're using log scaling, sorry, but I got to clear that out. Uh, if you draw a trend line, uh, that will measure. And again, if you're using log scaling, it will measure the same drop in percentage terms, not point terms. So you can see this drop right here was virtually identical. When I place that trend line from the highs to the lows of this drop here 
to where this one, where the sharp selling, I'm not talking about the highs where the market peaked, it, it grinded sideways and it fell. You can see that was almost identical. And as was that one, very darn close there. In fact, that one fell a little sharp, a little faster, went a little more, but as you can see, very close. So the point that I wanted to make, let's get rid of that trend line here, is the fact that in those two previous cases, uh, here we had that you know shot across the bow, the first correction. We did get a kickback rally. Uh, just as the current rally right now, you can see we've fallen so far. We we fell shy, uh, well shy of the highs, and then took another leg down. Although we didn't undercut the lows. Take those lines away. You can see here that uh, we did have you know there was the initial drop and the subsequent low. Then we had a strong rally that almost met the previous highs. That one was followed by another drop, and this one had about an equal test of the lows. And so far, that's what's lacking. We had this one test. Again, you know, my my scenario, uh, in 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 my my conviction on this has been being tempered recently. Um, starting to not like what I'm seeing on the chart so much, but I'm still sticking with that that near term. Uh, bullish bias, but again, it's not what I call an all-in thing. In other words, I don't have a very long uh, exposure. I'm still net long the markets, but trying to stay away from index uh, tracking vehicles like the SPY and all that, because it's just been a grind fest. I don't see opportunity there. I see opportunity in individual stocks, commodities, bonds, other things like that. All right, so back to point here. Uh, let's see. Let's measure that out. So if we look at what or how long it took from that initial drop and when I use this measuring tool, if you look at the green box on the bottom, or not green, I'm sorry, in white, towards the bottom, just above the green percentage numbers, you see that took 1.2 months. Uh, so just over a month there uh, till we hit that second low. In fact, the peak came, we can do that too. Let's just check that out. When I put it on that candlestick, 24 days later. So we, we had a sharp correction comparable to the current one, rallied for 24 days, and... Uh, about 1.2 months after the bottom there, we had another bottom that was uh, uh, fell shy of the first one, and then we rallied. Back here, let's see, from the lows, we rallied up for about 12 days, and uh, then we had another test of those lows. It looked like it slightly undercut them on SPY about 22 days later. Okay, so let's just take a look at where we're at today. So, so far from this drop, uh, if we count the peak that we had uh, just about a week or so ago, that was 18 days, and uh, and that gives us plenty of time. If I move this out here, there's one point. Let's see that the longest, longer the two. I think it was 1.2 months. That would show us now. And again, history will not repeat itself exactly if this does play out. But if the markets, you know, and that's what technical analysis is all about, is looking at past patterns and stock prices. And that's where we came up with all these head and shoulders patterns, falling wedges, all types of chart patterns, because they've happened in the past and they predict, you know, with a, a certain degree, some better than others, what may happen going forward. And so um, that's what I'm doing here is taking a look at these past corrections if we get another leg down uh, and it plays out anything close to this, it would probably happen soon. We may have already peaked and then we may test uh, possibly undercut, maybe fall short of those lows. Um, but uh, again, as of this time, uh, the large caps aren't looking so bad. We did have that divergent high there that already played out, as I talked about, for a correction. I don't see negative divergence. Trend indicators are still bullish. So uh, for now... I'm still uh, maintaining a near-term bullish bias in the market, still looking for this target to get hit here on SPY, probably a little bit more. Uh, and I still think in the coming weeks to months, um, the market will take out the, the previous highs. But again, not anything I'm going to bet the farm on. Um, at this point, I'm still viewing it as, you know, trying to, you know, pick up nickels in front of a steamroller, especially once we get that past this point and get to those new highs. But uh, again, with all this sideways grinding action lately, the charts aren't telling us a whole lot. So I think it's a good time um, to either focus on the best looking individual stock setups, individual uh, sectors, ETFs, commodities, bonds. Uh, but as far as it comes to the broad market, 
your long-term funds, or at least the way I'm viewing it, long-term 401k money, that's still long. That's in the you know stock market. That's in index funds and things like that. Whereas um, the near term, uh, I don't see a lot of uh, attractive trading opportunities. I just see a grind fest here that's likely to run your stops. So uh, again, I'm focusing a lot on individual stocks at this point in time. So there it is. Let's just keep an eye on uh, you know, course of large caps, but keep an eye on those small and mid caps, as I showed you there, those divergent highs. Uh, it would be nice to see, for the bullish case, that is, to see these divergences become burned through, meaning uh, IWM, and MDY, they only need to push a little bit higher. And once they do, uh, it will have negated or undone, if you will, these negative divergences that are in place now. And if not, if we start to roll over and build up some downside momentum, as you can see here, it will have confirmed those uh, some, some bearish crossovers. We will have effectively put in a lower high on the uh, PPO as well as the RSI and the other indicators. And uh, that divergence could play out for move down. And if it does happen, guys, let me just say this. If it does come, it will almost certainly be pretty swift. It will build momentum to the downside. So don't expect uh, something like this, uh, you know, zigzag all the way down. Sorry, wrong tool here. A zigzag, slow-mo. Uh, once we start to roll over, um, it's most likely you'll see just as we did in those chart in that chart I showed you a while back on the spy that second leg down to retest the lows. Once you start getting that downward momentum going, it tends to build and it's pretty quick. And then you get another, uh, just like we had here, usually a, a big washout move. So that's uh, let's just call it Plan B. I don't want to oversimplify things right now, but Plan A, I still have uh, you know near term upside in the market. All right, this has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Uh, as always, if you like the video, uh, if you'd give it a thumbs up on YouTube, I'd appreciate that. And uh, have a great day.